In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a hexi cardigan step by step. So for this pattern, you can actually use any sort of yarn you want. It can be um, DK, chunky, um, different types of fancy yarn, whatever you want it to be. The important thing is that you choose the hook appropriate to the yarn that you're using. And this is a very much a made to measure um, pattern. So we're going to use a chart to help us decide the size that we need to make it. And we need to start off by, first of all, making some hexagons. So when you make your hexagons, we're going to be measuring um, the distance between the half of the hexagon, the middle of the hexagon to the end. And I'll show you that when I actually get to a point of making a full hexagon. And that's going to dictate the size that you want. So this is the key finished width of half a hexagon that we want to look for. And that's what we're going to keep going until we reach that measurement. So for this one, I'm going to make a small baby size one. I'm going to go for a one to two um, and work towards making my half a hexagon size 13.5 centimeters. It doesn't have to be precise. Um, if you're kind of near all that is absolutely fine as long as you do this exactly the same for both of your panels. We need to make two hexagons. Now I always start with the magic ring because I like to have that um, nice cinched in center. So I have the cut end, I'm a right hander, so I have the cut end in my left hand and the working end in my right hand. And I simply just lay over the working end over the short, the cut end forming a cross. I then take my hook, insert it into the loop and grab that working end. And that is literally all I do and I start working from that point. The only fiddly bit to this is that obviously I've just got to hold on to it until I get started. I'm going to move my yarn over to my left hand side now that I'm ready to start and I'm going to now hold on to um, where I've made that magic ring and I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Now similarly to a granny square we're going to be working into the centre of this magic ring that I've created. Normally we would do four sets of granny clusters but for the hexagon we need six sets Similarly to a, a granny square, we're going to start each round with a chain three that is going to act as a treble stitch. And then we're going to join two um, trebles with it to form the cluster. So to complete the first cluster on every round, chain three, two trebles. So there's my chain three. So I now need to do tre um, two trebles. Yarn over, insert into the circle, yarn over and pull up a loop, three on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I'm going to do that again. Yarn over into my circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now, because this is the first round, I'm generating the corners as well. So between each of the clusters I'm going to create, the six clusters, I'm going to chain two and they're going to form the corners. So yarn over once and twice so that I've got a chain two and now I'm going to complete my next cluster of three trebles. Yarn over into the circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'll do two more trebles to form that cluster. So I've now got two clusters, chain two to form another corner and three trebles into the circle again my third cluster. So I'm going to just carry on that now. I've got three clusters. I need to have a total of six. So I'm just going to carry on and do that. Okay, so I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six clusters of three trebles in each with two um, chain two in between. So I obviously now want to join and complete this first round but I will need to make sure I form that last corner. I'm just putting in my cut end there just to start cinching it in so I can see it come together. And you can see I'm starting to get that hexagon shape. So I need to do a final chain two, and then I need to insert my hook into the third chain um, to join. There's one, two, and this is the third. And I literally just put my hook in between to go into that chain space, 
yarn over and slip stitch which means I'm pulling it through um, that where I've inserted and through what's on my hook like so and um, then I can pull my cut tail to cinch it in to form my um, hexagon and that's round one done now obviously for these um, cardigans if I show you my little baby one here there are lots and lots of design patterns that you can do. This one's obviously changing colour with white in between every round. You can do them all one colour. You can do them with um, rows of one colour and then change and rows of one colour and change. So many different ways that you can do it. And that's what's really lovely about these. There's so many things you can explore and do with them. For this particular design, I'm going to keep going in the same colour um, at this point and I am going to change colour so I'll show you, you that later on. The first three to four rounds are the trickiest bit to get going when, you, when you're doing these hexagons um, to making sure that you're working into the right space, space and you're remembering the, the, the pattern. So that's why I'm not going to change colour at this point yet just to focus on actually creating the hexagons. So we've created this first round of six um, clusters to create with two in between which has created our corners. And as this hexagon grows, we're always working in the corners and then eventually we'll start growing sides and we'll work into those as well. But I'll show you that when we get to it. So you can see at the moment where I finished, I'm kind of right on that corner. And actually the, the stitches are all being worked in from this first corner space. So in order to that first stitch to also come from that corner space, we're going to wiggle ourselves down into this by doing a slip stitch. So this is exactly where I finished off from that first round. So to start round two, I'm going to insert my hook into that chain space and I'm going to yarn over, pull that yarn through the chain space and through the loop on my hook. And that has just pulled me into now from where I'm going to start that I'm actually working from that corner rather than the top of the stitch. We can tighten all those bits up and pull it a little bit tighter. So from here, I'm going to start round two now by a chain three. One, two, three. And I need to complete that cluster by having two trebles to go with it. So yarn over and into the same space. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And the same again. So I formed a cluster in that first corner where I started. Now, when we're forming the corners, we are going to actually be adding two sets of the clusters in each one. So six trebles in every corner. Where I've started in this corner space, I've just done one half of that. But the way crochet works, because I'm a right hander, I'm working around to my left. I don't then want to put another set in this corner. It's going to look too weird. I need to come back to it when I get to this point here. So once we've done our chain three and two trebles, we're going to shift straight across and dive straight into this big corner space here. So we skip the three trebles and dive straight in here. So we yarn over straight into that space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm going to do another two trebles in that same space. to form a granny cluster. Now I now need to start completing the new set of corners. So I chain two and now I'm going to do another set of three in the same space again. Yarn over, insert and create three trebles in that same space. So in that one corner space we have made three trebles, chain two, three trebles. And that's what I'm now going to do working around into each of these corner spaces. Now, if you're someone that gets a little bit muddled and forgets where you're going and what you need to do, my top tip would be that as soon as you finish round one, put a stitch marker into each of these big chain spaces. That will help you when you come round to chain two, identify the spots that you need to work straight into. So I've done three, two and three. I'm now gonna dive straight into that next corner space with three trebles, chain two, three trebles.
chain two and then three more trebles and then I'm going to dive straight across into the next corner space and chain space of two and I'm going to do the same again three trebles chain two three trebles and you can see what I'm basically doing is making my hexagon grow. I'm doubling it in size. And the last completely free corner, I'm going to do the same again. Dive straight in, three trebles, chain two, three trebles. Okay, so you can see now how my hexagon is forming. Now this is one bit you've got to be really careful. Um, if you remember when we started we just did one half of our cluster here so we just did one cluster we didn't do six we just did um, a cluster of three um, so we do need to remember to complete that corner we, it's very um, easy to miss this here and then literally just join it at that point but you need to complete the other half of this cluster because we need two in every corner one way to check is obviously we had six clusters on the first round we need 12 so at the moment I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I need that twelfth cluster and I need it to join to form this final corner here. So I'm going to dive straight in, yarn over into that first corner where I started and do three trebles. And then I'm going to chain two to form that final corner. And now is when I'm going to slip stitch and join in the third chain up. One, two, three in there with a slip stitch, pulling through the yarn through both like so. So you can see again how my corner I'm joining in the corner space. That's where my rounds are starting and finishing in a corner. So there is round two. So you can see now I'm getting that lovely shape. Okay, as my hexagon is growing, my corners are becoming a little more obvious. I can see where the corners are. But the other thing that is now happening that as it's getting bigger is that I'm actually growing, there's, there's forming sides. And we are gonna start working into the sides. This again might be a point if you struggle with um, remembering where to go that you can start by putting stitch markers in. You can put a stitch marker in each of the main corners but you also need to remember that you are going to be working into the sides as well so you might want to put one in there too. We're going to start round three in exactly the same way as we have with the previous rounds of a chain of three and two trebles to form the first cluster and then we're going to move straight along to the next spot. So we're only making, if you remember our corner spots, have this three, two and three. Every corner's got three, two, three. Um, and it, we're at a corner and that's what we need, three, two, three. But we're gonna start by just having the a little cluster of three first and come back and complete it at the end. So we're gonna do the same again of shimming ourselves down by doing a slip stitch into the corner space. So without anything, yarn over, hook straight into that space, yarn over and pull that um, yarn through the um, chain space and over the um, loop on your hook. Then chain three, one, two, three, and then complete your two trebles next to it in that same space. So yarn over and into that chain space. There's one treble and two trebles. And as I've already just said at, um, at the beginning of this round, we're now starting to form sides. So we're now needing to put clusters in the side um, spaces. So in between these two sets of trebles, we're going to put in a side cluster, which is three trebles together into that space between. And that is it. Okay, so we're now growing and forming those sides. We're back to a corner again. I can see the chain space. So I'm gonna do the same pattern of three trebles, chain two, three trebles into that corner space. So yarn over and dive straight into it with three trebles. Chain two, three trebles. 
and then I'm back to a side so with um, I'm going to go straight into this space between the clusters yarn over dive straight in and then I'm back to a corner three trebles chain two three trebles yarn over and dive straight into it so I'm going to carry that same pattern around putting a, a Treb, um, a cluster of three trebles on the sides and every corner three trebles chain two three trebles and then I will meet you back when I get back to the start again okay so I've now got to the end and um, I'm just about to do that last cluster and again you can do that check so we had six twelve and then I'm going to have 18 clusters on the next one so if I just do that check, you should hopefully see that I'm at 17 at the minute because I need to remember to form this last corner here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then I've got 17 the, the side here. So I need to do that final cluster into the space where I started. So there's three trebles, do the final chain two to form the corner and then slip stitch into the third chain from that starting chain of three and pull through in a slip stitch. There we go. Now for this fourth round, um, I'm going to change colour just for that's going to be the my design that I'm doing for this particular one. But once you've done this, from this point on, you're literally just carrying on making it bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm going to show you changing colour for my fourth round and then I'm going to come back to my um, grey to carry on. So to change colour, all I do is simply lay the um, new colour over the hook and pull it through the loop of my old colour. So it's now the new colour is on the hook. I then pull the, the old colour, the grey down to kind of secure the new one in and then make my chain, sorry, my loop on my hook smaller by pulling down on the blue like so. Now this is where slip stitching into the um, chain space is really useful because if I start working and did my chain three from here you'll see that my chain three will start and then I start working into the space and I suddenly have all of the rest of it here so you have this sort of wonky start so this is where it's really imperative that you do do this method when you are changing colors because it just makes a nicer finish so I've got my new color on my hook now so I dive straight into the same corner space and I'm slip stitching so I yarn over and pull that through the space and through the one on my hook and then I can just kind of pull everything a bit tighter from there. Now I'm ready to do my chain three. One, two, three. And now everything's a little bit more secure. Now I tend to deal with all the ends at the end. So I pulled everything in and tight. It will hold in space in place and now I can carry on with my two trebles to go with that cluster. And I can also just push over those it's so that the, that is nice and together there. So let's get rid of this grey now, get that out of the way. And so now I can carry on my round. So I've done that first cluster with the chain three, two trebles. I'm going to go straight across the, this space in between the clusters here on along the sides and do three trebles. Three. Another side to do, it's getting the sides are getting longer. And then I'm back to a corner, so I'm going to do my three trebles, chain two, three trebles in the corner. Okay, so I'm going to carry on round with that same pattern, working along the sides and working into the corners to form new corners. And I'll meet you when I get back round to the beginning. Okay, I'm just um, coming to the end of my fourth round that I've done in this new color. 
and I've actually already gone into that final chain space, the one where I started, to complete this final corner. So that my last job is just to do the chain two to join them and then slip stitch into the third chain like so to complete that chain and I'm going to go back for me for my next round I'm going to go on to the um, back to the grey. Now you can probably notice that my little hexagon is looking very wobbly and you might think oh no what have I done what's gone wrong that is perfectly right it won't sit flat because that's the magic of the hexagon and if I show you at this point now you can see what is going to start to happen. So with this simple fold, I'm bringing these opposite corners together. I want to be able to have a flat L shape like this. And if you imagine that obviously as this gets bigger at the moment, this is a very tiny doll size. This is the arm and this is the top of my cardigan. And then this is the front that would open up. And this is the front, the chest of my cardigan. So if I show you on this little baby one here, I'm at this point like that. Um, so when you're creating it and it's not sitting flat, don't panic. All you can do to make sure you are going right is do that little fold to make sure that you are creating this L shape. That's what will make you um, know that you are on the right track. If you can't do that, that's when you might need to have a look back and check that whether you've made a mistake somewhere or missed a side or done too many in a corner or something. So I'm going to now go back to my grey so I'm going to change colour again. My hook is on the current blue colour and I'm going to lay my new colour back over and pull that through so it becomes the loop on the hook. Pull everything down a little bit tighter and then slip stitch into that corner space to bring the yarn down. And then I can pull everything a bit tighter again. Then I start with my chain three. One, two, three, everything's a bit more secure. Then I can do my two trebles next to it. One, Two. Now I've got that cluster, I'm going to get rid of that blue, get that out of the way, and then I'm going to carry on round. So now you can see I'm just going to carry on doing what I've been doing on each of the same rounds, working from that corner, the chain three, two trebles. I've now got these more chain spaces, I've now got three to work in, one, two, three. Then I'm back to a corner, one, two, three. And I'm just going to keep doing that and doing that and doing that, and my hexagon is going to grow. Now, if you remember, we talked about the um, finished width of a half a hexagon is what we're aiming for. So I'm going to keep going until I'm making the very smallest size, the distance from here. So when I fold it into an L shape, I want it from this, which is effectively the armpit, this right in the corner here, to the edge to be as close to that 13 and a half centimetre measurement. So I'm going to keep going until this distance here is to the um, target measurement. So if you're making a child's one that's 12 to 13, you're going to keep going until it's 21 centimetres. If you're making an adult one, you're going to keep going for a medium, it needs to be 23 centimetres and so on. So I'm now going to go away and do that and I'm going to create my um, panel until I get to the width and then I'm going to make a second one exactly the same way. So I'll come back to you when I've got two panels. Okay, so I've now done my two panels. So there are my two hexagons, like that. And then they fold magically into this L shape. There we go. That is going to form the front of my cardigan and the sleeves. You can see how it comes together. So we now need to start assembling. Um, first off, before we do that, you need to make sure you've um, woven in your ends. It's a good point to do it of your hexagon. So you can see I've done it on this side, so I'm just going to do it on this side. 
and because I've got colour changes that's where I've got more ends in here. Okay so I'm now ready to start constructing my cardigan and putting them together. So the first thing I actually need to do is make these into sleeves so that I actually have got these are attached and they're starting to form the cardigan. So we're going to sew the sleeves first off. Now the way I've done mine, well we've worked um, the same way round on the granny square every time, every round, we've not reversed. So I've definitely got two very different looks to each side of my square, as you can see. That's one side and that's the other side, so they look quite different. So one of them is a right and a wrong side. I tend to go with this being the right side and this smaller denser with the smaller um, looking stitches here being the back, the wrong side. And as I say, this is my right side. So I'm going to need to flip them to put right sides together and then um, for my stitching. So they can see the difference between the two there. We're going to stitch just along one edge. It doesn't really matter which it is because that can become my sleeve or that can become my sleeve. So you just need to stitch one long edge together on your first panel. So I'm just taking a bit of the matching yarn. If you wanted to, you could put a contrasting colour in for a, a, a stitch detail up to you. Now, if you remember, we've got our chain of two in the corner on this particular granny square so we are going to find the first chain so here's the first and the second I'm going to work in the second chain and find the second chain on the opposite side and I'm just going to then pull my yarn through now I tend to just leave it for the moment just leave a long enough end I don't pull it right through because I'm going to weave that in at the end afterwards now I want to match each of my stitches along to make them line up so we haven't got any, if you remember, because of the way we've done the hexagon, we haven't got any chains in between. We've literally got the three, three, three each way along. So I want to make sure that I'm putting, matching those up. Now, as we also have with any stitch when we've done a, um, a treble, is we've got this V shape on the top. That's the top of our stitch that makes this V shape here, this classic shape. Now we can insert the needle under both arms on the other side and both arms on the other side so that they match up. Or if you wanted to, you could try and create like a seam detail by just stitching in the outer stitches, just like that. And that then leaves this stitch line showing um, and creates quite a nice stitch detail. So that's something else that you can play with and do there as well. So I'm just for the purpose of this going to work under both so that you can see me doing that. So there's the stitch on this side. That's the stitch on the other side because that's a knot there. That's why it looks a little bit harder to see. And then I'm just literally going to slip stitch over. That's the second one. And pull it tight enough that it feels like it's um, really joining it together. Three and three. Now I'm on the next set of three and just check that's what I'm doing on the opposite side and that makes sure we're really lining them up so our seams join quite nicely. Okay, so I'm at the end and I can see that I've managed to keep my stitches together because I'm on the last one of that treble and the last one of that treble and then I'm just going to go into the first of the two chains like that and if I open up that arm there you can see I've got a little bit of a V so what I do tend to do is then also just to make the edge a little bit straighter join into the next chain just to make that edge a little bit straighter and then I just go in again to strengthen it like that. And now I'm going to work back weaving in this end through some of my stitches.
and just make sure I don't pull that in too tight. I just need to make sure I put it all the way through. I'm just going to get all bundled up. There we go. And then I'm going to snip that off in there. And then I'm going to come to where I started and put my needle back on the yarn and just do the same here. So I'm going to find that second chain now. Like that, just to straighten that up. And because my yarn end is quite short, I'm going to put the needle in first. Then thread it and pull that through. Like that. And snip off my end. Okay, so then I have um, seamed that shoulder. So I can turn it right now the right way around. And I've started to make my first sleeve. So I'm going to do exactly the same now on my other panel and I'll come back to you when my second shoulder is seamed. Okay, so I now have two seamed shoulders and the next stage is now to start um, joining them actually together to start forming the cardigan itself. Now, depending on what size you are making will depend on how much we are going to add and also what style that you want to make as well. So the first part is going to be to add in some um, stitches and some rows here to actually form the back. Um, now, if you are making an adult size, my pattern gives you a rough guide as to how much you want to add in here. But also bear in mind that it is kind of made to measure. So if you're making it for yourself or someone else that you can get to try it on, you can judge how much you actually need to add into the back panel. Um, because it can, my pattern is just a rough guide and you might find you want to add more or less. So we're going to add into the back panel by doing a few extra rows of the granny square stripe here. So in my pattern, I've got this three grey, one blue, three grey. So on the back, or well, this could be the back because at the moment it doesn't matter which is which. Um, I'm going to do the first row on each side as blue to kind of carry on that same pattern. I could just do it all grey, it doesn't matter. So you've got that design choices to make. Now, if this is the back, we're going to start with one of the sides. Remembering and just double check, there's my seamed edge. So I'm going to make this the back. We're going to connect our hook into this corner here and we're going to just extend by adding another row of the granny clusters along this side. So I'm going to work directly into this chain space here and I'm going to lay the yarn over and pull it through and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Then I do a treble into that same chain space and what I've then formed is a cluster of just two so I've got chain three and one treble now we only put two in the ends because that keeps that this coming along nice and straight if you think a treble cluster a granny normal cluster is a three is, is a bit v-shaped like this by doing two we're making it a little bit straighter so I've done chain three and one treble into the corner chain space and now I'm going to work along working into each of these spaces with the three trebles making a granny cluster. So move straight across to that space, one treble, two trebles, three trebles. Move across into the next space, three trebles again. Okay, and I'm literally now at the seam and I'm just going to do two trebles into this final space here. Again, for that same reason of making it a little bit straighter like that. So I've added in this extra row. Now for the child sizes, I tend to, on my pattern, I suggest just doing a one row on each side. So I'm going to do that with mine because I'm doing a child size one. And as I was saying earlier, just depending on what size, if you're doing an adult one, it gives you a little bit of guidance of how much 
um, to add in. I'm going to do one row of each on my one child one. Now this is where I'm being a little bit more careful to make sure that I am putting it on the right side so that I do have a cardigan. So be careful when you're adding in that you're now, once you go onto your second panel, you need to make sure that you are deciding which is the back side so that you haven't got two arms facing the right, the same direction you want them to be um, going to work as a cardigan. So I'm now going to add in my extra row for my child size one here. And then I'm just going up to the end again. So here's my final cluster of three trebles. And then I'm doing a final two in here. Now, as I've been saying, these are quite bespoke, these cardigans. There's always something slightly different you might do for different sizes and for the design that you're doing. So I obviously wanted to put a row of um, blue on each side so it continued my pattern which is why I've done one of each side and as I was just saying with the children's patterns I suggest putting one or a row on each side but we want to join them together so I mean I could um, literally just sew these together like that but I'm going to add in another row onto this particular cardigan and it will also show me that if you are extending how you might go about this so you're uh, once you've got to the end of a row I'm going to change colour you might be continuing in the same colour. You want to go backwards and forwards now to get the, the um, amount that you need here. One thing you'll obviously, it's much easier is if you now just carry on, turn your work and add in another row. But what that will do is it will give you that slightly different look of um, cluster because you're gonna be the, the other way around. Let me show you. So if I now join in this colour I want to do my next row in. As I say, you might be just carrying on in the same colour or like me, you've changed. So I'm going to chain three. Oops, sorry, my yarn's come up. Chain three and form an end like that. And then I turn my work and now I'm going to carry on doing the cluster across so into the spaces again, one, two, three. Now what that is doing is it's making a slightly different look of stitch on the, what is going to be the right side of my cardigan. I don't worry about that, it doesn't bother me too much, but if it really offends you to do that, there are a few things that you can do. You could cut it off, work from the opposite end and work front ways again. Um, or when you actually construct your hexagon, you flip your work each row so that you get one row round that looks like that, another round that looks like that. And then when you come to the back, it's less obvious. As I say, it doesn't bother me. I find this is much easier. So I just live with there being a slightly different look down the back and just take it as a design feature. So I'm working along with a second row along the back to infill on the back. So I'll just carry on and do that and show you when I get to the end. So when I've got to the end here, I'm doing my final three trebles into that last space. And then just to complete that row, I just do one final treble in the top of the chain three that I started in. Like that. Okay. So then you can see what I've got from this side is just a very slightly different look to the other one. Now you can, um, I'm probably going to do a row of grey on this side as well, just to kind of make it match a little bit better. 
and then I'm going to hand stitch them together. So again, these are all kind of decisions that you can make as you're going along what you need to do with what you need to do. If I was now going to be making an adult and I needed to put in some further rows, I would then obviously flick back and then start working across the other way as well. So I'm, you have to turn your work when you're working in straight rows because we've been working in a round with the granny clusters. Now we're working in a row. You have to keep turning it every each each row. So I'm going to snip that off and I'm going to do my other another row of grey onto that one to join it up. So I will come back to you when I'm ready to join. So I've added in the length onto both my panels that I want. And I'm just going to now sort out these ends and get these tucked away. Right, so I've now got an extended back panel of my cardigan and what I'm going to do now is hand stitch these together along here. Now like similarly before I'm going to work under both because it's going to keep the same style of attachment there but again you can do the same thing of just working into one or other of the um, outside or the inside to sort of add a little bit of an interest to the way you stitch it and I'm going to stitch them Again, putting my right sides together and then matching up as much as I can into the corners first and then match up my stitches. Okay, so I've just done the last treble and I'm just now going to go through these stitches at the end here just to tie the, this up and looking, making that as straight as I can and do the same at the other end. So now I've got the basics of a cardigan. So I've got something that's now attached, I've got sleeves, I've got a back. So the next stage is now is to do the, the various different things that you can now do to it from this point. So we can add on sleeve length and add on cuffs. We can add on cardigan length and add a hem. Um, you don't always have to do all of those things. This is where you get to choose and this is where it's lovely um, made to measure really because you get to choose how you want your cardigan to look. Now in the pattern you've got um, length to add on to your sleeve based on whether you're going to add a cuff or not. So you've got a with cuff or a no cuff measurement. The one to two size and actually this needs to be 18.5 centimetres with a cuff or 21.5 with no cuff. So at the moment you can see that that distance is only measuring 11. Right, so I'm going to start extending my sleeve out now. I'm carrying on my pattern where I've got my three rows of grey and then one blue. So because I've ended with three rows of grey, I need to put a blue in. And we're just going to join the yarn into any of these gaps from the granny clusters um, on the row below. I tend to go under the armpits, choose one of these ones here, just because then it's less, it's out the way a little bit. So I'm going to attach my yarn into these under there first. I'm going to chain three and then I'm going to do two trebles into that space. Put my end in there. One Two. So I've created the first granny cluster. Oops, I've dropped it. Do that treble again. There. Okay. So you can see now I've joined myself in with a granny cluster into the space and I've started under the armpit. So now I'm just going to work round in each of the spaces, putting in three trebles into every space. 
Okay, I'm just actually stopping as I'm coming up to the shoulder seam. So you can see here, here's my seam from the shoulder and basically it forms, I've got a treble, um, three trebles here forming cluster, the seam and then back to the other next cluster. So all I'm simply going to do is work into these two spaces that are either side of the seam. So I'm going to put three trebles in here. Skip over the seam and put three trebles in here. And then I can carry on round, working three trebles in each of the spaces. So I'm just going to do a final cluster of three trebles into that last space. And then I'm just going to join to where I started by slip stitching into the third chain of that chain thread at the beginning. So I insert my hook into that top of that chain, yarn over and pull through both of those loops, slip stitch to join. So I'm going to keep going round now. I'm going to move back to my grey colour for my pattern and I'm just going to, because I am changing colour, I'm going to just slip stitch down into the space to move my colour down. And then I'm going to chain three from there and then do another two trebles into that space. And then I'm away to start my next round. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to be sticking into grey now. Let's cut that off as I carry on round. So I will come back to you when I have added in the amount of rows I need to extend my sleeve. So once you've got your sleeve to the length that you need it to be, um, this is where you can finish if you're going to not add a cuff. You might want to do a round of double crochet just to um, finish, feel like it's got a more of a finish to it. But otherwise that can be the end of your sleeve if that's how you're going to leave it there. If you're going to add a cuff, the first round is going to be a decrease round. So we're going to use double crochet um, to make it smaller. And how much you decrease it is a little bit again up to you. Um, if you want the cuff a bit looser, uh, you can decide whether you want to just do a couple of crochet, uh, double crochets um, in each gap or one every gap. So you, you kind of want to perhaps have a little play and see what suits you. So first of all, we're going to chain one and we're going to do one double crochet into this space. So yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over and pulling through both. And then we're going to skip the three trebles here and then do two in the next gap, skip three and two in the next gap. So you can see how instantly that's going to make it smaller because we're skipping the three trebles and not working into them. So I'm going to move straight over to the next space and do two double crochets into this space. Then move over and just do two double into the next space and do that all the way around my sleeve. Now this is where you can see as you start to do it you can judge is it pulling it in enough, is it pulling it in too much to decide whether you want to alter because what we're doing by doing it, this is we're forming a row of stitches on the top which we're going to use in a moment. And then we just want to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet to join it. So you can see now that my sleeve has come down into this sort of size here. Really, you do want to make sure you've ended on 
even stitches. So I'm just going to check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. So I've got 24 stitches, so that should be fine. Um, okay, so now I'm going to start with the ribbing. So I'm going to start by chaining three. One, two, three. And we're going to do a now a round of trebles into each of these stitches. So where I've done that double crochet, I formed that classic V stitch on the top. I'm going to do a treble into each of those. Okay, so I've done a treble in each of the stitches. I'm just back round the beginning. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the third chain of that chain three I did at the start. And what you can see that's done is created a round of little posts that I'm going to use to work around to create a rib. OK, so now we're going to start with the front post, back post to create the rib. And what that is, is we're basically these treble stitches are forming the posts that we're going to either work behind or in front of. So with a double crochet, we're going to work in exactly the same way as we normally would. So we're going to dive straight in, but we're going to dive behind the post, yarn over and pull that from behind the post, yarn over and pull through both and then we actually come out from the back and over the top of it and pull up the loop there we go yeah and yarn over and pull through too you can also do this as a treble version which makes the cuffs a little bit longer so if we yarn over first and go behind the post yarn over pull up the loop then we do our usual yarn over pull through two and pull through two and then to go through the back we yarn over first go so we're going behind so we're making the post go behind our hook yarn over and we're pulling up the loop right from behind yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so yarn over first behind the post yarn over pull the loop behind the post then we complete as normal yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over then we come from the back to go over the post yarn over and pull it right through yarn over pull through two pull through two so the treble version is going to work up a bit quicker because it's um, longer or the pattern tells you about the double um, crochet version, which just makes the rib smaller. So I'm going to carry on with this treble version. Now when you get round to the beginning, I'm just going to do my last post there. And then this is where I started. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the top where I started like that and then I can carry on now I usually start with a chain three and then you want to carry on now doing it the same direction as you did in the previous one so that this rib continues so here I obviously went underneath it so I need to continue oops that way and then this isn't over the top, so I'm going behind, so my the post is over the top of my hook. So I'm doing a second round of doing the same thing, but doing it in the same order, so that you're carrying on that rib working in the same direction as the one below. So you're elongating it, making that rib line longer. Right, so I've done two rounds and for my baby size cardigan and cuff, I think that's going to be um, long enough just with the two. If I did a third one, it would be quite a lot. So I'm going to finish it there. I'll just do a knot that will just go over the top <clears throat> and then I'd weave that in. Okay, when you've done both um, cuffs and the sleeves are extended, 
I've just done my one side for now because I'm going to move on to show you what you would do next. If you don't want to add any length to your cardigan, so you want it to be short, a short cardigan, or you want it to be cropped, you can move straight on to starting to add some um, a final finishing around the outside. And to do that, you would turn the cardigan up so that the back's facing you and start in your right hand corner here and you would attach in and work a treble all the way along the back going over the infill um, spaces here right back to this corner then you would work up the first side over the shoulder round the back down the front and back to this corner so you work in in a all the way around from here along the back up the front, around the neck and back down this to join back at this corner here and that will give you the finishing um, edge to your cardigan. If you want to make it longer or if you want to add anything else onto it you need to do the adding on to the bottom first. So I'm just going to add one row onto the bottom of my cardigan. So I'm turning it over with the back facing me and then I'm going to open it out I'm going to work one row across this bottom here and it'll just help sort out this join at the bottom there. So I'm going to attach my yarn into the bottom right corner. Chain three and then work another treble into that same corner. And like when we were working in lines before, I'm just going to leave it with the two in there to make a straighter edge. Then I'm going to move straight across the next chain, sorry, the next space and do three trebles, create a granny cluster in that space. And then move straight along to the next one and do the same again, three trebles. And do that all the way along the base of my cardigan. So I'll keep going across till I get to that middle bit where we've done the back infill. Okay, so I'm at the infill point. I'm going to put um, on the last corner here, I'm going to do another treble set of three in that last obvious space there. And then we want to work across, but we need to fill it in with some granny clusters. So you can see two, again, natural points that are um, opening here to put the clusters into. So I'm going to put a cluster into this space there, cluster of three trebles. I'm going to skip over this part here and then work cluster of three into here and then I can work into this next corner space here Oops. I'll move first and then I can work across the rest of the base of the cardigan. Okay, and then I'm back at the corner, so I'm just going to do two trebles into that corner to form a straighter edge. And then if I was going to carry on elongating it even further, I would then just chain three, turn my work, and then carry on working backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards for as long as I wanted my cardigan to be. So I'm just working a double crochet now across the base of where I've just finished. So at the bottom of my cardigan, I've got it to the length that I want it to be. And before I add on the rib at the base, which I'm going to do, 
I'm working all the way around my cardigan with a double crochet just to give it that finish um, but also I'm going to use this to work a rib hem into exactly the same way as I did the cuff but before I do that I'm doing this going along the bottom because I'm also then going to continue in one fell swoop going up the front around the neck and back down the other side of the cardigan and if you just keep going that's naturally what happens because there's not a point where it stops it just goes in one line so I'm just going to carry on going along the base okay so I'm at where I've got my two um, stitches that I did to, to add on the extra so I've got the the last this is from the treble I can go underneath that fine then I'm going to have the chain three you might encounter this at the other end so I'm just going to go into the top of the chain and then I'm going to work down the side so I'm just going to work into the two chains down the side here and then I'm back to um, the standard stitch at the top from the trebles that are now on the side of the cardigan so I'm now working up the front panel so I've gone along the back I'm now working my way up here I'm going to carry on up this front panel and then I'll show you what I do around the neck so I'm just approaching the neck part with my double crochet so I've just got a couple more tops of the trebles to work into here and I'm going to put another um, double in underneath this bit here and then here you just kind of want to work along with what makes sense um, you know for the distance of where you're going getting a few stitches in just to neaten it up so I'm going to put one under the side of that stitch there and then I'm going to put another one on the side in between here another one around that chain that I've got there I'm going to put another one into there and then I'm probably going to do another one in the same for the other side and you're just kind of wrapping oops a little bit far, too far down that one kind of just working your hook into some spaces just with a view of neatening up those back stitches just making it feel a little bit neater done I've just literally gone in here and you can see how much neater that that um, neckline now looks until I get to a point where I'm back to seeing um, clear stitches again so I'm going to put a double crochet in there I'm going to work one in under here and then I'm back to the tops of trebles again and then I can carry on down the other front panel now worked along the bottom I've come up this side I've gone along the neck and now I'm coming back down the other front panel okay I'm very nearly at the back to where I started so I've just come back to the last corner so I'm just going to um, I'm working on the side of the trebles so I'm just going to add in some double crochets in there and then I'm going to slip stitch into the first one where I started and then you would cut off and secure off that end and that might be how you finish your cardigan and leave it exactly as that however if you want to do the same as the sleeve and add a ribbed um, hem you would carry on exactly from this point but we're going to only work along the base of the cardigan so now we've done the double crochet part already we now would work along with our row of trebles to form the posts so from the point you finish you would chain three and then you're going to work into each of the stitches 
to create a row of trebles to form your posts and I'm just going to work all the way along the base now forming the trebles ready to do a rib so I'm just reaching the end of doing the trebles all along my base in preparation for my rib hem um, as you can see it's actually quite a nice um, finish as it is so again if you wanted to you could just leave it as that design too so um, as another idea you can just have a, a row of double than a row of treble works quite nicely as a as a nice finish um, but I'm just going to show you what I would then do for my hem if I was going to do a rib so like we were doing before I've completed that row and I'm just going to then chain three and turn I'm going to do it as a treble front and back post so I'm yarn over first behind this first one, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and then I do the opposite direction for the next one. So I come from behind, put the post at the back of my hook, yarn over, pull through, and then complete the stitch as normal, pull through two, pull through two, have the post behind my hook, in front of my hook rather sorry and then behind my hook and I would keep doing that all the way along with all of these treble posts that I've created and again I can decide how deep I want that rib to be um, generally I find the same length I've made for the cuff looks the best for the hem as well so I did two rows or front post back post for the cuffs I would probably do two rows the same for the hemline it just sort of balances it out that they're both the same so there we go you can see that rib starting to form onto the bottom of my cardigan which is really lovely and I will probably make it the same depth as my cuff, so it's a little bit longer and carry on doing that. But that is essentially it. That's the, the key things to making the hexi cardigan. So just to recap what we've gone through, we started off with our hexagon, two hexagons that we've then folded to create the sleeves and the front and back panels of the cardigan. We've then joined at the back, we've infilled, and that distance is dependent on the size of your um, that you're making, how much you infill at the back. We then added on to the sleeve, and we worked around um, adding in more rows, again, according to the size that we're making, using this measurement from the armpit to decide how long we need to make this. We then could choose whether we're going to add a cuff or not. So that distance was depended on whether you're going to add a cuff or, or not going to add a cuff. Once we'd done the length, when we are adding a cuff, we did that with front and back loop um, variations of either treble or double crochet to create that ribbed effect. We then added on length if you want to we added on an extra row at the bottom of my particular example but you could add on however many you wanted to once we'd added on the length we worked a row of double crochet around from the corner all the way around and along the back neckline and back down to tidy up the neckline and these front side panels here and giving them a little bit more stability and then finally if you want to add on an extra bit of hem or ribbing we've done that by adding in a row of treble first and then starting the ribbing to add on a, a little rib edge to it so there we go i hope that video has been useful and helpful and helps support the pattern um, i'd love to see what you make so please do share with me your makes when they're finished and um, you can also share them on social media but don't forget to tag me in so i see them so on instagram 
that's susie.jules on Facebook, that's Susie Jules, um, because that's a great thing for me to be able to see what you've made and I'd love to see them. Please, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, because obviously that really helps um, it get found and it's good to know that you've liked it. And obviously you'll also then find out when I add other new freebie videos to my YouTube channel. So thanks ever so much for joining me today. Um, I look forward to seeing what you've made and I look forward to seeing you back on Susie Jules Creates really soon. Take care. Bye.